All right, the last first of the season. Ready to go. A lot of firsts when you start a football season. One last first. Let's do this thing. Three guys before the game ready to roll. This is the TCU preview, episode 492. So it's the first Big 12 road game. You've already had your first game. You've already had your first home game. You've already had your first Big 12 game. Now it's your first Big 12 road game. After that, I don't know what else is first. Second Big 12 road game. I guess, what, your first game in October? First game against Dana since he left. First game against your previous coach. All season, I think, we'll do that. Yeah. What would you play Oklahoma State? What would it be? Yeah. First time you've played Oklahoma State when they're really bad? Yeah, watch out. Oh. That'll probably that probably won't age well. Three guys before the game. <laughs> three guys before the game brought to us by Start over on. Yeah. The Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever dealer in the state of West Virginia. Visit BurdettCamping.com, located in Winfield, West Virginia. That's BurdettCamping.com, the only warranty forever dealer in the state. You buy it once, and the warranty lasts forever as long as you own it. And that, my friends, is a great deal. By Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, efficient for 25 years. They got everything you need. I mean, they got printers. They got, like, infrastructure beyond infrastructure. They can do remote monitoring of your IT. They'll come in. They will give you a complete evaluation, digital phone systems, and they're a new blimp. So that is that was a heck of an addition. And when I'm told, I didn't get into the thing when it was here. They got, like, super great line of copiers because those things are big. They got all kinds of copiers that you need inside that blimp. A fax machine, too, just for old times' sake. Un- unconfirmed. <laughs> Comax, WV.com. Their stuff is literally in every county in the state of West Virginia. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Yes, they do do the James Bond pontoon boat. They also happen to be the premier pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia. When people talk pontoons... They talk Lou Wendell Marine Sales. Like you talk pepperoni rolls, you talk North Central West Virginia. You talk pontoons, it's Lou Wendell Marine Sales. Three guys also brought to us by GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Triple rewards points every Saturday with your card. So get your card. Visit the GoMart website, gomart.com. Get the rewards card. Then you get triple points uh, whenever you buy anything on a Saturday. And three guys coming up on the program. Spreads on stats brought to us by the Conley CPA Group providing value. Beyond the numbers. So, first Big 12 road game. First flight for the Mountaineers this season. They drove. Well, I bring that up because Neil brought it up during his press conference on Monday. He said, you know, as crazy as it sounds, he goes, you know, we've got a lot of guys that haven't flown yet. High school kids, you know, seniors that came in, now they're freshmen. He said, so we literally, like in the early part of the week, go, okay, who hasn't flown? Okay, kind of walk them through that. And like, who who needs what? You know, do we give them a little Dramamine? What do we need to do? Because it's not funny if it's you, but you've been on these flights. When you go for the first time, there's always some kids that haven't done it before. And like all of their other teammates, like they go like, he hasn't flown before. And then they just focus on him. And then if things get a little bumpy, immediately what happens? All the eyes go like, you know, how, how's he dealing with it? How's he doing? How's he doing? How's he doing? Some guys just don't like it. Here's what I don't understand, because I, I've seen this, but to get, for example, because the plane's pretty full, oh. three offensive linemen together on three seats together, or cattle. three defensive linemen. I mean, the seats are barely... It's a cattle call, dude. It's a cattle call. I mean, you're in each other's laps. Night and day difference between football and basketball travel. I mean, basketball travel, I mean, you, you spread your arms out, you can touch both. I mean, you're just... you. you you're in a, you're, it's nice, beautiful, all the room you want. Football? Then oh. you're trying to eat. It's like Tyrannosaurus Rex. Your yeah. arms have to be like this. <laughs> like to eat. You, uh, you certainly weren't consulted on the Dramamine dosage, I hope, because you've had problems with that in the past. <laughs> overdose. <laughs> the worst, Hoppy. Yeah, overdose. I did, I, how did I know? How did I know that you'd be a little bit, it took you, took you over a little bit? It took me over. Yeah, it was. They carried me through the airport. Houston. Oh, you OD'd? Because of him. What'd you take? 
I, I don't know. I thought just <laughs> I thought just a Dramamine, have a nice little nap, wake up in Arizona. We were headed to the bowl game, Insight Bowl. Listen, right? somebody Insight gives Bowl you, 98. Brad, somebody gives you something in the airport, don't take it. Well, I thought I could trust him. Couldn't. Had to carry me off the plane. Couldn't walk. Couldn't oh, that see. Was, oh, that was. We had a basketball game at night. Then we drove to Pittsburgh and Mitch Fink, yeah. Hollywood actor, actor was in uh, yeah. the West Wing. Yeah. Uh, he drove things. us. He drove us up the up to the airport in his Saturn, in his Saturn. Remember Saturns? I do. Yeah. He was going like 261 miles an hour, <laughs> and we said, "Mitch, play uh, flight's not till six in the morning. We're good. You take your time. We'll get you there." Anyway, so we got up early. So he said, "Man, I, I feel like I said, hey, take one of these." I didn't know the impact it would have on him. Take Liter- one of these. Lit- literally, that's how what many? I, that's what I agreed to. Take one of these. But what? Well, what? I don't. I, he gave me more than one. Apparently was out. Wow. He was wobbly when he was walking through the halls of the Houston airport. He was wobbly. He was so anyway, wobbly. so I hope they're consulting yeah. somebody else other than you. No, they're not coming to me for that. Okay, they're good. not coming to me. They're not coming good. to me for that. Okay. So let's jump in. West Virginia and the Horn Frogs of TCU and to symbolize who West Virginia is playing, Hoppy came with almost a little TCU-ish color there. Not their, not their prominent purple, but they've got a little something with a lighter shade like that. Yeah, it's, ri- it's, it's primarily, though, the Kansas State throwback basketball uniforms the that they go with. Yeah, the Lavenders. <laughs> no, it's good color. Aren't, go they're ahead. going black on black, right? Aren't they doing a blackout Black thing? on silver. Black on silver. Silver numbers, black jersey. Yeah, it'll look very dark. Oh, okay. Yeah, and West Virginia, oh, I can't say because they haven't released it yet. Oh, Okay. You know, guys, and I tell you what, I think our oh. fans are really going to like those red uniforms. I think you really like them. <laughs> By all rights, this should be a big rebuilding year for TCU. I mean, it, playing for the national championship, eight guys uh, went in the NFL draft. You lose your quarterback, Max Duggan. You lose your big running back, Kendra Miller. You lose all your receivers, uh, Quentin Johnston. You lose oh, a couple offensive good. linemen. I mean, you lost a lot of talent off that team. You lost... I think seven offensive starters. So this should be a, he lost your offensive coordinator in Garrett Riley, who went to yeah. Clemson. So this should be a big rebuilding year. But Tony, apparently, Uh-oh. apparently the guys behind those guys were pretty good, <laughs> number one, and they went out and got guys. They used the transfer portal hard. I got some guys from Alabama and went out and filled some of those slots. So they have not, really missed a lot and the new quarterback Chandler Morris is getting better every week so Brad they've they've rebounded nicely so far the other side of this is I I love when we start to get into this time of year because you're you're starting to each week that goes by the preseason projections or what you thought should be happening starts to go out the window a little bit right as you get more data that that is happening currently and I think when you look at West Virginia that's that's certainly been relevant from the defensive side more than anything and so as you start to get in this time of year each of these tests gets a little bit stiffer as you move along and if you're West Virginia you've been tested already you've played three power fives in your first four games that schedule strength you hear me say this all the time this time of year does the schedule strength benefit start to show itself here a little bit because if you're TCU I think they're looking around going exactly what do we have this year we're not quite sure got surprised and ambushed by Colorado in that first game which is understandable I don't think anybody had any idea what Colorado was bringing to the table and TCU got lit up by Shador Sanders and that and that group then it was Nichols Houston and SMU so this is going to be the the most they've been tested since that Colorado game as well. So I'm fascinated to watch, all right, as West Virginia goes into a road environment, but okay, you've been on the road in front of 110. All due respect to TCU's group, this this group of West Virginia should go down, play, say, hey, let's try to go and take our swings. Does defense travel? You say that a lot in college basketball. Does defense travel going against what you thought last week was going to be the best offense you faced? And maybe it was but West Virginia held it in check. Now I think you get another good test against this TCU offense. My concern as the week has gone on has been geared toward how many times can you go out and play at a very high level of efficiency and with energy. And by that, I'm saying, so you open up the season, the much ballyhooed Penn State game. Okay, did that. Duquesne, you come back, you're supposed to win. They won, but you also had almost two hours of lightning. Okay, fine. Then the pit game, right? You put all of your clams in the middle of the table and you went after it. Hugely emotional game. Then last week, again, okay, fine for pit. Get over pit because now this team's beating us four years in a row. We got to go, 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 go. So now 
as Brad alluded, you don't have the instant energy that your fans have brought you for the last three games. And so you really got to dig deep because not only emotionally, but physically now, every team needs a good breath after playing five games. Four, obviously, but this will be the fifth game. So that's my concern. Mm -hmm. Not that they can't, and not that they're not going to put forth, attempt to put forth the same amount of effort, but you just need some you need some rest at times and I'm hoping they can get their rest starting Sunday and they go out there and ball out but that's my concern well and Tony it's a legitimate point and also I, I think you're probably sp talking specifically to about the defense which has just been lights out for the last couple of games I mean can they do that again because I think they're going to have to do it again they're going to have to again because you just don't know what you're going to get offensively and is it going to be Nico and it, you're probably then limited offensively as to what you can do especially because Brad what does West Virginia want to do offensively run it they want to run the ball who is good against the run TCU. TCU is 16th in the country in run defense. They're only giving up 85 yards a game. So that, you know, now like, okay, are they going to be able to, start, can West Virginia, even though they have a good offensive line, are they going to be able to run on this TCU team? And they, But they got to throw some, and they got seven, they got a bunch of starters back on defense. It's a very good defensive line for TCU. And they're just, when you start looking at this, and Brad, I know you have a deeper dive on the stats, concerns start to pop up everywhere. Flip side, though, Colorado doesn't run it. They wanted to throw it. Houston doesn't run it. They wanted to throw it. Nichols, throw it out. SMU, in there yet. So who has come in against TCU that wants to and can run it as well as West Virginia? You talk to their folks, Hop, and they're sitting over there in their preview going, okay, is this defense ready to stop the run? Can this defense hold the run? They've got, they've got some talented dudes on that defense. They've got a bunch of linebackers. But that's also potentially a defense that you may be able to run on. I, you know, West Virginia last year, Tony, what did CJ have against this team? 104 until he got hurt. And it was uh, 11 minutes to go in the, was it the third or I think third? Yeah. So we've seen, and we've seen that 3 3 5 type of defense here at West Virginia for years. At times, you can run on that. So I, again, that's going to be a key every game for West Virginia. It's massive here. And I'm going to get into some time of possession stuff coming up from our uh, spreads on stats from Conley CPA group. But. That's something to watch. Can you run on this defense? Because I don't think this Frogs defense has been tested with a running game like they're going to see this week. Neil had something uh, interesting that uh, when I was chatting with him this week, and that was this, that last week coming off the emotion of the pit game, he took it a little bit easier on his guys so that they would be ready to go on Saturday. He said the defense did fine with that. The defense did fine with that because when they came out Saturday, they were ready to go. He said the offense didn't do well with not really being pushed and hard physically. And he said, and here's probably why. The O-line, there are tons of experience there. Those guys were fine. He said, but, he said, look who we're playing with in our skill spots, right? C.J. Dunn, you got a quarterback in Nico, very young, still very young. I think people kind of forget that he's still very young in his career. You have C.J. Donaldson, like 11th or 12th game. Um, Jalen Anderson just played a little bit toward the end of last season, right? Hudson Clement, Rodney Gallagher, um, Preston Fox, um, Devin Carter's the only guy with a ton of experience. And so he thought that because they didn't tax those guys, they didn't perform as crisply and, and do what they should have been doing as well. He said, fool me once, my fault. Fool me twice, shame on me. He pounded them this week, Tuesday and Wednesday. Well, I mean, pound them technically. He made them go hard Tuesday and Wednesday so that on Saturday they know their assignments, they know that how, to, how to get yards after contact, make plays. So that was his, that was his remedy for that. So what, how does it translate? You're going to have to complete some pass plays too. Absolutely. I mean, you're just going to have to. And, and they were there last week. And you heard Neil mention that if you go back and watch the tape, there's, there's plays there and they were close, those have to start being converted into things that work. And Hop, we spent most of our coverage talking about the difference in sets and play call. I thought, I thought Neil and that offensive staff did as good a job as you can do for what your limitations are going against what was a pretty good defense in deck in trying to, to get some new wrinkles out there, to get guys open in different spots, but then you just have to execute. So another week of, of prep for Nico and those receivers, another step forward. Can they now make the move to not just, oh, wow, look, there were four different guys open on those four different plays. Now you have to complete those for a couple big plays. Look, what do you do if you're loaded on offense? You line up and you go, you don't make it too complicated. You go, we're doing this, but you can't stop us. 
right? What do you do if you're not loaded on offense? You disguise it, which is what they did last week. Confuse Texas Tech with different formations, things like that. Now, you would think that that uh, TCU, has had, with a veteran defense, had a chance to look at all this. They won't sure. be as fooled necessarily as Texas Tech will be. So you've kind of used that. So I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about this offense. Brad, we, we talked about this game last week where it seemed like West Virginia was running successfully. And they did to a degree, but they, only, they averaged less than four yards per carry. So, and what, what will it look like this week? Yeah, well, it was just a tale of two halves. And again, I'm going to get into that a little bit. The, the first half when West Virginia controlled the game, jumped out to the lead, and quite frankly, offensively did enough to win the game. Then right. you asked your defense to just carry it. Everything totally flipped in the second half. So can you, can you instead of just dominating for one half, can you translate that into three quarters this week and, and be successful? But it is, it is almost identical to the same formula. And We'll talk further about this, but you're getting a – you got a Texas Tech team that wants to go fast, number one in the country in pace. Now you're getting a TCU team that's fifth in pace. So you're going to want to do the same things. What's West Virginia going to want to do? Yeah, Run the ball, down. control the clock, which they did A-plus fashion in that first half. A-plus. Do that again, you're, you're going to be in the mix for a win. The uh, thing that Neil also pointed out this week was – the fact that they're playing a team that wants to go fast for the second straight week also helps TCU because now TCU sees on tape how West Virginia does handle a team that wants to play fast. So a little bit of, uh, of give and take. But real quick on that, it, this is easy to say. It's an easy theory. It is hard to execute. But you saw what happens. Uh, Texas Tech can want to go as fast as it could go. You were getting stops. You weren't letting them make plays, and therefore they can't go fast. So that also, as we said going into last week's game, it's a double-edged sword. If they get going fast, yeah, they're going to wear your defense out. But if you stop them or they go fast and go three and out, which Tech did a ton in the first half, then that flips on its ear, and it's a massive advantage for you. And also what happened in that second half was – that Texas Tech, which they did not do in the first half, in the second half they got that run game going a little bit, right? So that opened up the pass more. And uh, uh, TCU has a good running back in Bailey, averaging 120 yards a game. So there's a concern. And you also have a quarterback that will scoot. Yeah, he'll uh, run. Chandler Morris will run. He's run the ball a lot so far this season. That's Tyler Shuck was supposed to be a runner, too. I mean, so here's it just simply comes down to this defense is doing everything it needs to do to stop offenses. It saw how to stop a, a speed offense. It, it's just going to have to execute. I've, I think the biggest point is what you guys said earlier is can you step up and ask them to give you an A-plus effort again? Maybe you can. Maybe we look back at the end of the season and say, well, yeah, you can ask them because they were a legit elite defense. Right now, right now, that defense, that really is fascinating. It's, and I'll talk some more about individuals, but that's what's making it elite, is we could spend the next hour individually going through about seven or eight different guys defensively that have been big-time players. This isn't a one or two guy right. having a Big 12 defensive player of the year type of year. It's seven or eight different guys that you've got to account for, which is making that defense go right now. Good relationship between Neil Brown and Sonny Dykes. Dykes used to coach Neil Brown when Neil was at Kentucky. Sonny Dykes was the slot receiver coach. So these guys know each other a good bit. Here's Sonny Dykes with his thoughts on the Mountaineers. Going into last year, we'd lost four games in a row against them. Had a really hard-fought game last year up in Morgantown. We were, we were fortunate to win, and so we know it's been a, a, a tough game for TCU in the past. Um, this is a good football team. A team that uh, is playing with a lot of um, confidence, you know, a lot of momentum. Had a really good win against Pittsburgh, uh, and then obviously a really good conference win against Texas Tech last week. You know, they're playing really physical, playing really hard, and they look like a typical, you know, West Virginia tough football team. So we'll have our hands full Saturday, and yeah. So doesn't that make your doesn't that make the your 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 doesn't that make you feel good? He said, it's a typical West Virginia football team. That's what I noted out of his F comment. Physical, yeah. physical. Like, yeah, yes, that's where we used to be. That was 80s. That was 90s. That was Rich Rod. That was like, hit you right in the mouth. And, and frankly, West Virginia had gotten away from that. Yeah, it started, it's starting to come back now. That's good. So um, that's good. That's a good thing. You gotta, I, I always said, you have to do something, right? You have to be known for something. So let's. Let's be that blue collar lunch pail sticking all your other cliches. Let's be that group again and be like, oh, gosh, win or lose, you know you're going to be bruised. 
Well, and that really transfers over. That's certainly true of the defense, and they're doing that. But that also transfers over to your offensive style, too. I mean, that's oh, – that's, yeah. My goodness. It's struggled so far to get going, and certainly it's not putting up the points you want to. And a lot of that has to do with you had to go to your backup quarterback a lot earlier than you'd intended to. But that's the strength of this team, too. That offensive line is going to go hit you. Yeah. Zach Frazier going to run down the field and hit you? I mean, Zach Frazier's getting as many yards as the running backs. He's like hitting three people, and he's he's nine yards downfield. Yeah, I, I would strongly encourage fans, if you're really super into this, and if you're listening to this, you probably are, spend a little time after the game with your tape. And I know you can't see it as well when the, on the TV copy, but where Zach Frazier starts and where he ends a play will make you go like, wow. Like, routinely, he'll end up, on the far side, on a hat outside of a hash mark or at the painted number. I mean, think about what. The, and I asked Matt Moore this week, the offensive line coach. I said, "Have you, like, is he said I've never had a center that I could ask to do those things. I mean, my man is like yeah. he he patrols. He's kind of <laughs> like patrols. I mean, he, he's like a, he's like an attack dog that patrols. Like he just comes out like I got the perimeter secure here. Like I got it all. <laughs> he's, like, he's like your escort. I mean, that trooper runs yeah. around with Neil. That's what Fraser is. You get a guy on the outside. Fraser's right there, running alongside. Exactly. Who am I going to hit? Don't get near him. I'm going to hit you too. <laughs> yeah. And that's and never mind then Wyatt Milam on the outside. Who it, now you're watching Fraser, so you can't see Milam's a pro. I mean, Milam absolutely erases he man people, too. people. Yeah. The flip side, Doug Nestor is very good as well. He he's going to get a test this week. That's going to be a, get into some other matchups here in a minute. But that's one to watch. You can help me with the name here, Paul Oyewale. Hey, Oyewale sounds like good to me. Leads or he's top ten in the Big Twelve in pressures, and they all come from their left side, which will be facing the right tackle in Nestor and the right guard there in Yates. So watch the right side of West Virginia's offensive line to have to, when they go back to pass, you're going to have to give Nico some time. Watch that side in particular. And that, Brad, that's a great point. And that front is the strength of that defense. Uh, those guys, uh, they have, the, the front alone has eight and a half sacks this season. That's without pressure from the linebackers, the corner safeties, anything like that. They have 16 sacks overall, but half those have come just from the guys up front. Yeah, which is, which is tremendous for their defense. But guess when it's hard to get sacks, Hop? When? When you're running the football. So if you start to look how things match, and yeah, you look at their pass rush that can get home, that funky 3-3-5 that you have trouble identifying coverages. You know, if you're Nico, you haven't faced a lot of coverages but you're not going to run it or you're not going to throw it a whole lot. So if you're West Virginia, that might, and maybe this won't age well, but that might neutralize some of what they have been doing really well, TCU, getting after the passer because a lot of these teams have thrown a lot against them too. So that might not be as big a factor this week. If you're you're West Virginia, you're going to win the game. You need to make it not a factor because you're running the ball. Their three down starting linemen weigh 890 pounds. Big fellas. 295. 320, Dominic Williams right in the middle. Right over the head, by the way, of Zach Frazier. Mm-hmm. Zach Frazier gets a different test. Oh, we got to watch that. Yeah. He gets a different test this week. He has a guy on top of his head, which isn't always the case. And then the other guy, Oye Wallye, is 275. I would think Frazier likes that. Right? Oh, the, I, old the old right? wrestling. Like, right? Come Leverage. on, Come on in the ring. Yeah, We're going to line up right here. Yeah, he's, he's in. Yeah. he probably can't scoot out. Yes, correct. Out to the sidelines, but... He locks he that one guy up in that three three five. Not the other two guys to okay. his sides. Here you go. Yep. You're saying run That'll inside. You're saying you can run inside. Well, we'll see. I mean, if if you can neutralize that the nose right over your center, then they're going to have to worry about dropping more guys down in, and then that opens some other things, as we always say. So, yeah, that's absolutely a matchup to try and watch when you're not uh, don't watch the ball for a little bit. Just sit there and key in on Frazier and the nose guard. Okay. The premier recreational vehicle dealer, trailer dealer in the state of West Virginia is the Burdett Camping Center. They're the only dealer in the state that offers a warranty that lasts forever. You buy it, anything you buy there, the warranty lasts forever as long as you have ownership of it. So to visit, BurdettCamping.com, two T's right next to each other, or you can visit them at the Bricks and Mortar location located in Winfield. Three guys also brought to us by the fine folks at Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans, they sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. I would think with the boating season uh, coming toward an end, maybe you go in there now. You may do Good a little, deal. little we, right, we're wheeling and dealing Sure. at this time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Don't underrate the uh, fall boating season, though, as those leaves start to change. Oh, there's some, yeah, I told, I've, I've told you I'm a strong advocate of these days of the year. Oh, these beautiful. are some of the best. These are some of the best days of the year. Are right, you ready to do this? You ready to do some uh, spreads on stats? You good? Mm-hmm. You ready? Roll. 
you, I'm going to yeah. run some tempo. Did, did you Let's didn't bring go. your glasses? Tempo. You didn't bring uh, your glasses? I got them. I'm not putting them on yet until it's time to get serious. So I check the numbers. Oh. I'll just go right to the numbers. Here comes a heater. Let's jump into the uh, analytics portion of the show. Spreads on stats. Brought to us by the Conley CPA Group. Complete service, public accounting, consulting firm serving clients throughout West Virginia and uh, surrounding states since 1985. They do provide you with value beyond the numbers, so much more than just preparing a return. They will provide you with that insight that you need to know because as Hoppy could tell you, because he does a public affairs show, those tax laws change they do. quite a bit. Yes. We, had a big, we had a massive change this year in the state of West Virginia. Income tax change. That forced uh, some people to hold back and wait until the... Personal the, property the, tax change. Stuff, yeah. I mean, you gotta, you got to like right now... Just as soon as the podcast is over, call them because <laughs> otherwise you'll lose money. Conley CPA Group practice areas include audit and assurance, tax planning preparation, and then, as I said, consulting and advisory. They'll also outsource your accounting and CFO services, businesses of all sizes. Check them out, the Conley Group. Got a bonus one first here before we dive in. Ooh. What? Put the glasses on. Oh, he's got credibility. Serious. Now he's serious. Bonus Dick. stat. What do you got? Well, we're talking about this defense for TCU and good versus run, good versus pass. A key note, Johnny Hodges is out, one of their linebackers, who was really talented. Tony, we watched some film this week, and he's a guy, you know, you, you're watching film, a lot of times there's a guy, there's just a guy, and he's all, that's their guy. But here's something to keep in mind with them, this linebacker unit as a whole. So Hodges is fifth in the Big 12 in run stops, and that's what, what that definition is. It's a loss for the offense via the run. Okay. Okay. So Hodges fifth in the Big Twelve and run stops, but three of their linebackers are in the top seventeen in that category. Wow. So yeah. you're gonna have to work on the run. Man, but bonus, you would think with that with that three three five that that those three guys are supposed to absorb the blocks and the linebackers and make you drop the, the linebackers down. Correct. Right. They have another injury or two over there. Excuse me. I said they may might have another banged up person or two over there. We'll see. Game day. I don't like to see the young men get hurt, but if it's an advantage for West Virginia, you'll take it for a week. Give that young man a well, chance to recuperate. For, for his greater health, stay out for a week and be back for the next game. That's right. All Did right, you, you ready? Yes, do me. We're going to run tempo here because we're talking about tempo and pace. Just mentioned earlier, it's going to be a big factor all season long when West Virginia plays, running the ball versus keeping the ball versus how well can you do that against the other teams. Saw this last week against Tech. As we mentioned, they wanted to run tempo and go fast. West Virginia was outstanding in that first half of play where that game was really won offensively. It's going to come into play this week as well. I mentioned the Frogs are fifth in the nation. It plays run per minute, averaging 2.79 plays per minute. So there's two things to watch in this game when it comes to pace. The first can West Virginia's defense do what it did to Tech last week? Hop, listen to this. On Texas Tech's seven first-half drives last Saturday, only two went longer than three plays. Wow. One of them was a four-play that ended in a turnover on downs. The other went six plays and ended in a field goal. West Virginia forced four three-and-outs on seven drives in the first half against Tech. Sensational. Right when you, took, when you seized control right. of that game, right? Right. Number two. You have to have success if you're West Virginia running it to keep that TCU offense on the sideline. West Virginia did that last week. In the first half versus Texas Tech, West Virginia had a 13-play drive and a 12-play drive that resulted in a total of 12 minutes and 55 seconds of possession. That's just two drives that chewed up nearly an entire quarter of time of possession. You talk about doing it right. right. The defense is slowing them, and you're running it right down their throats, and they can't stop it, and you're just holding the ball, watching that time tick off. So that's the blueprint, right? That's the blueprint. It's just simply, it's not about how do you do this against TCU. It's what do you do. So running the ball last week successfully led to a time of possession advantage of 21 minutes and 25 seconds for West Virginia versus just eight and a half minutes for Tech in the first half. Literally textbook on how you do it. I mentioned earlier, Tech is the fastest team in the country running three plays per minute. So you're not getting a team that runs any faster than Tech. In fact, so far, they've been just a tad slower, so you've already seen it. Now, on the flip side, there are only four Power 5 teams in the country that run fewer plays per minute than West Virginia. Now, that would make sense, right? That's exactly what they want to do. So really, you wonder why West Virginia is 3-1 on the season? 
It's because they've been doing exactly what they want. Run the ball, control clock, taking it from the other team, not letting them score. Pretty good formula, huh? You like that formula? I like that formula. Run the ball, like, keep like the on, ball. Like, like on a schoolyard, it'd be kind of like the sixth grader going to third grade. Hey, want the ball? Can't have it. Yeah. Hey, you want that? Or just holding their arm out on their head. You know, <laughs> hey, look, just hey, holding on the head. I got the ball this? right here. You can't you move. Want it? Can't have it. Okay. So point being to all of that, watch the time of possession, the number of plays run throughout the game on Saturday. The chances are very good that whichever team is winning those two categories wins this game. If, if TCU comes out and they're running plays on you, Hop, and, they're, and the time of possession is not massively in favor of West Virginia, you might have a little bit of a situation. Brad, just to add a little nugget to that, West Virginia is uh, third down defense, 25%. 25%. Been great. Been great. All right, so each of the last two weeks, we've had some success on here identifying some specific matchups to watch. Let's see if we can do that again. TCU's offensive line is a work in progress still this season, on the early season. We talked to Frog's play-by-play -play voice, Brian Estridge, on Sportsline this week. What was the term he used, Tony? He said it's growing. It's growing together. They're, so it's, it, they're working on that unit coming together. Well, West Virginia's ability last week to get pressure was a huge factor in that win. And in fact, that's been true for the last two games. Next up, here comes Chandler Morris. Morris has the most dropbacks under pressure in the Big 12. Hmm. That's a good stat. Hmm. 27 and a half, 27 and a half percent of those pressures have been the responsibility of the right tackle. That bodes well for Jared Bartlett and Sean Martin. Bartlett is tied for eighth in the Big 12 in total pressures from the left side going against the right tackle for them. So he's on the left. Sean Martin sits one pressure right behind Bartlett. So you've got two guys basically in the top 12 of the Big 12 pressuring from the left side. Hop, we're getting specific on this program. Pressures from the left side. Watch Bartlett and Mart and uh, Sean Martin. Now, it's, it's a really small sample size. But you can add in Lance Dixon and Marcus Floyd, who are tied for first in the Big 12, in pressures from the left side by safeties in the Big 12. And West Virginia would seem to have a nice little opportunity. Again, that's four different guys that are high up in the category coming from the one side against the side of the line that TCU has had some trouble with. I would think Marcus Floyd took a lot of attention this week in the TCU offensive room because my, my guy was – explosive on Saturday. So they'll know who he is now. They didn't know who he was last week. Know Interestingly, you're not looking at my notes, but the next line in my notes said, I would think TCU knows this as well. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to have to commit extra resources, though, to help that right tackle. Is that going to be the tight end who's a very good pass catcher? Does he have to stay in and block more? Running back has to come over and chip. If so, they're going to have to do something over there on that side to help. When they do that, West Virginia now looks back to the other side. You turn Trey Lathan loose from the right side. He's fifth in the Big 12 among linebackers when it comes to total pressures from the right side. Wow. So as you He's can see... He's a baby. The, He's a baby. The overall point here is what I said earlier. There's multiple players that are getting involved in the action here. This just isn't turn Jared Bartlett loose, but if they bottle up Bartlett, well, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You've got people coming from both sides of this line applying pressure all over. So that's the formula. Run it offensively, slow them down, don't let them have the ball, and then on the defense, keep that pressure on Chandler Morris there and make make them one dimensional. Bailey's been very good running the ball. Make him run the ball. That also choose some clock there as well. They want to go fast. Make him run it. Put pressure on Chandler Morris. I think he got a shot. Okay, let's go a little bit on our offense here. We got. I know what you're saying. You got to run the ball, but you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to win again with 17 or 20 points. You're simply not. I mean, I'd be stunned, right? If they. <laughs> If it comes in and West Virginia wins this game and they're around 17 or 20 points and like the, the, the 1983 score comes in there, like it's like, and the final score this afternoon, <laughs> it's West Virginia 17 and TCU 10. Like, I don't think it can happen in nowadays football with a team that wants to go that fast. Uh, I'm, I mean, you got to, you got to, my you point slow all tech that. down. I mean, you, you got to keep going back to that. Do you win with 17? Probably not. Do you win with 20? That's going to be hard. Can you win with 24? Mm, Can you win that 24, 23, 24, 21? That's, that's conceivable. You get that pressure. You get a couple turnovers. You run the ball successfully and keep it. You're suppressing possessions. If you're running the ball, that just helps so much. But no, do I think you can just do what you did last week and not throw it? No, that's why we were talking earlier. Those big plays that were there last week that you did not connect on, you simply have to find a couple of those. Can I, uh, this is your area. 
can I give you a couple stats? Sure. Mine are so like mine are kindergarten stats compared to yours, but just for our folks out there, TCU's most productive quarters are the second and the third quarter. They've scored 44 second quarter points, 45 fourth quarter points. So second and fourth quarters. Their stingiest defensive quarter is the first quarter. They've only given up 13 points in the first quarter this season. And uh, just to kind of put some numbers into perspective for you, they're averaging, they're allowing just 20 points per game, which is, uh, that's pretty stingy, right? Hoppy, 20 points. That's only seven. That's the middle of the Big 12. Seven. Um, Doing really well. 16th best in the nation in rush defense. They're only giving up 85. So last week, what was the number? 77 or 78 that West Virginia ran for the entire game in Lubbock. And they had over that by the end of the first quarter. So as you watch, listen to the game on Saturday. These guys are only giving up 85 a game. I, I need to see that, though. Excuse me? I, I, need to, I need to see how that turns out. They haven't played anybody that, that's been able, that has wanted to run on them. How about this number? Colorado doesn't know what the running game is. They just drop back and throw it. I think Dana forgot, too. Did, did you realize what their pass defense is? Go ahead. 121st in the country. Yeah. Because Shadur Sanders threw for 7 billion yards against him. <laughs> but I'm just saying, so if ever there's a time for West Virginia's pass defense or pass offense to crank it, they're giving up 292 yards a game on the, in the air. Well, he threw for almost 500 in that first game. They're, they're, that's what I'm saying. When you're still early in the season, you've got to be careful on some of these and, and look at, one, who they've played, and, two, what those teams tried to do against them. You know, Houston on the other was down a lot too. So Donovan Smith was just dropping back and throwing. You know, at, at, at the risk of repeating a much repeated point is that, what's that? I was just leaning in because you said, I meant the, I wanted to. Oh, well, well, just that, and I think Neil Brown addressed that this week is that, that Nico Markio, if he's the starter, whoever's playing, he's got to have some help. I mean, he really does. I mean, he didn't, he's not it's getting. Both, it's a two-way street. Two-way street. You're right. Every, I mean, in order, we talk this about this all the time. Watch an watch an offensive football play. There's eleven. Oh, it takes one cat. Seriously, <laughs> it takes one cat to do the wrong thing. I mean, that's the beauty of this game is that you have to have an unbelievable synchronicity in order for plays to work. And if you don't, then one guy can screw the whole thing up. That's why this whole offense needs to get it going. I'm really interested in it. This will be a fun game because. You remember at the start of the season, I said, no, this offensive line doesn't have to be elite. It just has to be very, it just has to be good. And then sometimes it has to be very good. Well, this Saturday, they have to be very good. This, well, needs, to be be when, this needs to be one when the season goes over. You go, you remember when they went to TCU and they freaking just laid wood and pounded those guys and were able to run the ball? That's what this has to be in order for you to have well, a chance. Well, uh, that's going to be, that's until this passing game comes together, that's, I think, going to have to be the story every week, frankly. I think yeah. it was the story last week against Texas Tech, they're going to have to be elite every week. It, it is the story. I, I, I think that's right. I think they have to be elite. I don't think it can be a just, hey, this offensive line was pretty good. They've absolutely got to dominate. And listen, your defense played great complimentary football to help you there in the second half when you just weren't getting the ball. But yeah, I, I think it's got to be elite. And that's why this. I think this is going to be fun. This is going to be a good test. And you're on the road. You're almost a, a two-touchdown underdog. Not a lot of expectations on this one. You go in and just take your best swing at it. Absolutely. Then... We'll talk next week. This schedule opens up. You're about entering the time when you got to really make some hay. But this is one to me where I think you just go in and say, all right, boys, let's go. We've played a difficult schedule already. Well, yeah, we're on the road. It's hitting 110000 against a top 10 team. That's all due respect to TCU. Absolutely. But let's go in. You're let's saying go you house money? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of house money here. You've you've held serve at home. You've started out 3-1, and one, which there were so many people saying you couldn't do that. I think you're in really good shape. You go down there and play loose, free and easy, see what happens this week. Totally with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know it'll bump people off. You say you're in a no-lose situation, but just go there. This is, well, this is one of those fun ones. You just go take, rip your shot. You know, they, and, and if you walk out of there with a win, th- I mean, this is a really good thanks for having us. <laughs> <laughs> and you're 4-1 and coming back, staring down the barrel of the teams that are coming. You're feeling really good That's true. if you get out of there with a win. Yeah. So you think it's a thanks for having us? If they oh, it's a big time. Wait, you go in as two touchdown dogs. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is a big time. This might be a walk out of the radio booth right across that little four and all time. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I guess. Do that one. Hop, you feeling okay? Yeah, why? Well, I think you need some healing. Oh, I can I always use healing. I think you need some textual healing. Emotional, emotional healing. Some uh, those things they have in some pistols. Sit under some pistols. 
I, I have the music on so loud it sounds like you're just mumbling. Kind of neat. Three guys before the game, textual healing. You can call us anytime. Three, no, actually text us. 304-404-4083. 304-404-4083. Textual healing brought to us by episode 800.com. Episode. Story of the episode's been tempo and pace. You're going to have to run pace. Well, I know. Episode 800.com where you can get all kinds of stuff. Hoppy's sporting three guys apparel today. You got the three guys uh, shirt. You can get all that kind of stuff on there. There you go. Anything. This is the most text ever. It just keeps setting a new record each week. Let's see. We'll give it the weight test. Ready? Get the microphone down. Yeah, that's a lot of text. I should have used the bathroom before this. Well, if you need to go, we can make a line change. Got like a hockey game. <laughs> <The now>. Hockey? <laughs> yeah. Texts are 48 out of 50 states. Great when the Dakotas with a combined population that's less of half of West Virginia. Why should we care? <laughs> wow. Guy comes out killing the Dakotas. All rest due, of the country, respect. rest of the country wants to put us in last place for everything but population, and especially population density is safely away from the bottom. Just imagine if we were ranked by population per naturally level land, we might be near the top. <laughs> we just he kind of squeeze. Yeah, just, yeah, we'd be Texas or something. A texter, hey, three guys, Nick the Greek here from Fairlawn, Ohio, by the way of Bridgeport. Big missed opportunity from Lou Wendell Marine Sales. They could be selling bontoon boats <laughs> maybe they are efforting that would be great very good the bontoon sure there's no trademark attorney coming no out no this is a story a west virginia connection story when i was in greece visiting family we took an early morning walk up to the acropolis to see the parthenon i had a big wv flag with me hoping to sneak a picture holding it with the Parthenon in the background. As soon as I pulled it out of my bag, I heard a loud whistle and a lady screaming at me, forbidden. When she got up close to me, she kept asking what country this was from. I was trying to explain it wasn't a country, but it was my university. As she was getting ready to escort me down from the Acropolis, I started singing Country Roads to try to help explain in a way she could understand. At that moment, it was like Zeus himself threw down a bolt, a lightning bolt, and as I saw the light bulb turn on over her head, she ended letting me off with a warning. The song saved me from lifelong family embarrassment. Or a Greek prison. <laughs> <laughs> you have all been a bright spot when I've been feeling homesick. Thanks for being great ambassadors and representatives of the university in the state of West Virginia, signed by Nick the Greek. I have a neighbor who's Nick, and he's Greek, and he went to Greece this summer, but it's a different Nick the Greek. Because Nick the Greek, my guy, would have told me already that he got busted. <laughs> well, there used to be, in Morgantown, the Acropolis Bar. That was Nick, right? That was Nick. Yeah. Hi, three guys. I'll keep this one short. If the offensive skill positions improve 15 to 20% in yards after contact, total yards and plays of 20-plus yards, with either Nico or Garrett, we could be looking at 9 to 10 wins. Not impossible considering the plays we've missed in the quarterback weather. I'm withholding judgment on the offense until TCU, but my climb meter wouldn't take much to really start growing again. Thank you, Preston Oak Hill. Tony, hey, Tony, it's Jonas from the High Street Post Office. <laughs> Elite customer service. <laughs> Thanks for last week's shout-out. I'm a small celebrity around here now because of it. One thing, though, for Hoppy, the Saberton office is actually called the Delslow office, and although I'm sure, I'm sure you get good service there, you could get great service at the downtown or the Star City <laughs> office. <laughs> shots. Glad you guys support the post office. We love the show. Go here. Thanks for the correction. Oh, I just want to tell you, Jonas, we are strongly in support of postage stamps. Always have been, and that won't change. Uh, Joe from Barbersville, really hoping the defense can keep improving like they have. If they do, oh boy, look out. We may be in for one heck of a season. Win this week and could really get some people talking. The excitement is brewing with this team. little update from my previous text. Cabell Midland is at the state golf tournament next Tuesday. Brad, you're welcome to ride along in my golf cart. <laughs> well, that's awfully nice. That would be fun. Congratulations. Do you know that gentleman? Do you know him? Yeah, met at the food court. Oh, okay. Got yeah. you. Isn't it interesting how you win a couple games and how the vibe oh, yeah. <laughs> how the, the vibe arcs toward a very positive trend? Yeah. Oh, it does. As it should. It was great to see you guys Friday at the food court. My wife and three kids stopped by. Well, great to see two of you for once. And the odd man out was not hoppy. Side eye glance at Brad. I just assumed Spreads had some cash bets going on behind Daniels. Speaking of that, Hoppy came over to the table where we were, and without hesitation, he picked up one of my kids and gave him a big hug. As a former employee of Hoppy's, it warmed my heart to see that. Needless to say, my wife was like, who in the heck is this man? <laughs> I said, don't worry, he's a germaphobe. Oh, and he used to be my boss. He then turns to me and says, is there a bathroom around here? 
Sounds like you all need some porta johns. So there you go, Hoppy. I'm oh, sorry I missed him. I did. I had two days there Friday. Was there early? Came yeah. back late. Stayed till eleven o'clock that night. Did sorry, did you stay till eleven? Well, sure. Texter, close it down there, Hop. I don't, yeah, that was you know. I, well, never mind. Texter, a few Saturdays ago, I finished my Mountain Roaster cup of coffee. Went to Lou Wendell Marine Cells in St. Albans, boarded my special edition James Bond pontoon boat. I grabbed a can of Kirchvale out of the cooler, piloted my boat down the Kanawha River to Point Pleasant. As I'm walking toward the Mothman Festival, I spotted a Go-Mart. I used Go-Mart card to get a five-pack of Reese cups and an eight-foot Slim Jim. Stood on the edge of the crowd surrounding Point Pleasant's mayor, who announced that he had permanently banned a member of the three guys from the festival. Just as he was about to identify the culprit, the sound of a prop engine down, drowned out his voice. We looked up, saw the Comax blimp. I pivoted toward a Burdett camper and asked the Conley CPA whose it was. He said, with all due respect, Tony, I think it was him. I'm efforting to make sure that I'm right. Dr. Jeff and Charles. Very excellent. well done. Literally the only thing he missed, Dr. Jeff should have been wearing an efforting t-shirt when he. Solid yeah. point. Oh, no. He's, the at the end, he says, I am efforting to make oh, sure yeah. that I am right. He got He's him all in. And nobody wasn't wearing the shirt. I'm yeah, saying. that's true. Episode 800.com. Sean in Roanoke, Virginia, had a great time Saturday at the food court, enjoyed the brisket tacos, strawberry banana lemonade, while the wife enjoyed the wine bar. Spreads my question regarding the spread to the game. I hope this isn't one of those funky lines that you've said you like to lean into. I don't know. It just seems a little much. Love the show, guys. Let's go Mountaineers. And there's there's a picture of those folks right there. Good nice to see husband, everybody. Husband, wife, and child. Yeah, what's the, nice. um, 12, what's and the half, 12 and a half as we sit and record. So it's gone up pretty fast. That's a, it started at nine and a half. Did it? Well, it depends. Circa and Las Vegas opened it at thirteen, so it's been it's kind of been all over. Where's the, place. the money going? Where's the play? Well, it keeps going up, so it's been coming in on TCU. This next one is pretty uh, pretty wild. Pretty wild. Good morning, Tony. Brad Hoppy, first time texter. I wanted to reach out, share a pretty cool story with you guys. Seven years ago. My not-quite-seven-month pregnant wife, five-year-old daughter, and I were vacationing in Outer Banks. Two days before, we're scheduled to come back to West Virginia. My wife suddenly starts to have complications. We rushed her to the Outer Banks emergency room. She spent 24 hours before they eventually transferred us to Norfolk Hospital. Upon our arrival, we learned the severity of the situation for the baby, my wife. The doctors rushed her into a surgery room. They performed an emergency C-section. While in the OR trying to control my nerves and emotions, one of the doctors asked me where I'm from. As soon as I said North Central West Virginia, he quickly asked me if we lived near Morgantown. He talked to me about his visits to Morgantown, how much he loved it there. Seconds after my son's born and placed in the incubator, the doctor quickly runs in and starts to play Country Roads <laughs> off of a radio. The entire room of doctors, nurses, anesthesiologists started softly singing that familiar tune as they finished preparing to take my wife into recovery. Because my son was born nine weeks early, he needed to stay in the hospital's NICU. After our vacation was extended by two weeks, we got the green light, flew him to, you guessed it, Ruby Memorial Hospital, where he spent the next three weeks before finally coming home. Now, last weekend, seven years later, we're able to attend the WVU Texas Tech game as a family where my son Nolan Allen Cooper was able to sing his song alongside the Mountaineer Faithful. Nolan may have a Virginia birth certificate, but he is a Mountaineer through and through. Hey, look, let's try to show that video. So, um, so that literally is, they're playing country roads. That's in the OR the day that little fella was delivered. Then little guy goes in the incubator. There's dad and baby seven, two months premature. Is that? Then there's the airplane to fly him to Ruby. Then he's in Ruby. They put the little mountaineer cap on him. This is also, and this is last Saturday. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's about as freaking good as it gets right there that's pretty that's cool awesome man oh that's perfect it's a happy ending to a difficult story oh that's awesome there you go man my man looks good huh <laughs> that's amazing uh that's great absolutely amazing great what, text absolutely amazing what they do with preemies nowadays and uh, obviously at WV Medicine. I mean, yeah. it's just unbelievable. Hey, three guys, please help me get the word out. If you're going to allow this to go on, I've got to take matters into my own hands. Signed by the real Morgan in Morgantown. So there you go. They got a they got a wanted sign. Wanted for plagiarism, Morgan in Morgantown. So there's someone else that claims they're Morgan in Morgantown. That's the real Morgan in Morgantown. Hoppy, you know them. You've spent time with them. You've yeah. talked with them. I mean, I'm with her. She's Morgan. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was... That when I met them, she said she was Morgan. Right. She Morgan. showed you her ID. license plate. 
Showed ID. Yeah, showed ID. Showed your ID, a license, yeah. And normally we don't check IDs at these events. Normally don't. <laughs> she did. She gave it. Texter, scope spreads and bellhop. Bring the bell back. I meant to share this with the all the blimp talk last week. After the victory over Pitt, we noticed one of the Goodyear Comex blimp support vehicles in our parking lot. <laughs> As you can see, this was the highlight of the night for my nephew. There he is, next to the Comex blimp truck. Apparently, they haven't updated the van yet to include the Comex on the side, but I'm sure they'll include it next paint job. Let's keep the revenge tour going Saturday against TCU, signed by not Charlie in Charleston. Texter. Brian from Williamstown, 1138 on Wednesday. I hope I'll make this in time for Tony's cutoff. <laughs> Who do you think has to step up more this week, receiving core or the running backs? It seems like we weren't as physical later in the game last week. Could be the box, could be the weather. Loaded box doesn't help. Thoughts? Also, mm -hmm. West Virginia Connection, this is a good one. I was outside the other evening doing some lawn work. My neighbor comes down, never see him much. Our property's touched uh, since their road and the house is up the hill from us. Very nice guy. Help me give you some ideas as to how to take care of some of our trees. Turns out last six years, I've lived right next to Pete Collins, none other than the father of childhood home of Metro News' own Ethan Collins. <laughs> if Ethan's producing the podcast, give him a hello for me and have him swing by the next time he's home. Oh, and load him up with some Kirchvales to bring by. Haven't had any since the January reveal. It's always a West Virginia connection. Always, uh, and one degree of separation. Yeah. Welcome, Ethan. Williamstown, big game this week. Oh. St. Mary's. Undefeated. Oh, regional oh, St. Mary's. Undefeated, undefeated St. Mary's. Blue Devils. Texter, this new three-guy schedule has me out of sorts, and as a rule, I don't like things to disrupt my routine. Did so, I send this text? Agree. Yeah, I, was say, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm with so, you. <laughs> so, maybe, so maybe Neil does have to go. Just kidding about that, Neil. The schedule has me all out of whack. Oh, well, bear to my cross. Now on to more important things, not actually germane to this show, but rather more of a Metro News thing. I need the three of you to weigh in. Is it more prestigious to be a Metro News Hawk or to win the Buckeye News Hawk Award like Les Nessman did? This is keeping me awake at night. In the spirit of brevity, I'll stop there. Enjoy the show. Coming up for Oak State, hoping the food court's going. Need some of that real legit RevKev BBQ beat the frogs. Sean and Raleigh. Thanks, Sean. Texter. Are, any future plans for um, food court? Why would you do that? I just just well, ask. You, you, can do, you, you can't do that off air? You can't ask him that off air because now he's probably going to say we're committed for the next five games or something ridiculous. He's going to give you plans for 2025. Can you just ask that <laughs> off the air? All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Any plans? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, there's some, there's some talk of doing one on the road at Houston. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not true. <laughs> can't get permits down there. <laughs> to answer your question, I'll be efforting. All right. Uh, texter, hello. My brother-in-law introduced me to you guys earlier this year. I'm a big fan. Seriously, you all are the perfect combination of sports commentary, fair and positive takes, and fun. Thanks for all you do. Efforting toward episode 800. Now that you've got your all podcast download representation from all 50 states, time to – this is an amazing story, too. It's time to take research to the international level. My family and I have been living and working from India for the better part of the past 12 years. Wow. Here we go. Where we live, it's 10 and a half hours ahead central time. I'm curious how many other West Virginia, <laughs> central time. Curious how many other West Virginia natives and fans living abroad also faithfully listen to your show as well. What percentage of international time zones do you think you've accomplished so far? Seriously, the longer I'm away from home, the deeper to my dedication the old golden blue seems to become. I could tell you countless ridiculous things I've done over the years to catch games at all hours. This past weekend, I'm up at 1 a.m. local to watch the tech game when my 12-year-old wakes up to go to the bathroom. He sees me in the dark living room watching the game on ESPN Plus from my laptop with the custom rabbit ears I've engineered so the app or website works correctly. He looked at me from the hallway with a very confused, sleepy face. <laughs> I motioned for him to come over, sit with me, watch the game. And he said, Papa, it's after midnight. What are you doing? And sleepily, he walked back into his bedroom. He obviously still has so much to learn about priorities when it comes to being a Mountaineer fan. We are efforting over here to recruit all 1.3 billion people in this country to support the Mountaineers. Each time we travel to India from the U.S., we bring a suitcase full of WVU shirts to hand out to our friends as gifts. It's always a fun way for us to share a little bit of our culture and all things we love and we've learned to love and share in their culture. Thanks for all you do. Sign, signed by Rocky Bombay from Putnam County, living in Mumbai. I'd like to request a follow-up from Rocky Bombay. Just what are you doing there and how did uh, you get okay. there? And he'll get you. Yeah, he'll text, I'm sure. All right. 
Curious. You ever been to Bombay? You been to India? No, I just uh, on on a f- when I was going to Thailand, I was stopped in what was then Bombay, now Mumbai, but didn't get the answer's no. Answer's no. Texter, hello friends. Just finished listening to Sunday's recap on mowing the grass at my family's camp property in Tucker <laughs> County. I wanted to give my worthless input like everyone else has about Neil Brown. If we can get wins against Houston, Oak State, Cincy, and UCF, I'd say it was a successful season, but oh, what do I know? One more thing. I was in the Redneck Kroger yesterday and saw that they had the Trust's beer in stock. Why can't we get them to sell Hoppy's beer? The man literally on the Mount Rushmore of the state of West Virginia. Take care, you three. Stephen in Morgantown. It's probably a whole different thing. Yeah, could happen sometime. Efforty. Texter. Exclusive. What's that? Very exclusive. Virtually. Yeah, it's kind of like... You gotta, gotta want it. Gotta know. Gotta, gotta go want it. Gotta it's, be, it's become the Pappy Van Winkle of beers. <laughs> Texter, got one I know spreads with love. My wife and I were watching Red Zone on Sunday, and I was kind of tuned out when my wife goes, they just showed her she's at the game. Taylor Swift was at Arrowhead sitting in Travis Kelsey's mom with mom. Never let, never live. No, I'm shooting no. Never live bet a prop so fast in my life. I was legitimately scared they wouldn't let me place this bet. There it is. So he bets Kelsey anytime touchdown score live betting. Tremendous. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I, Explain that bet again. So as soon as he saw that the announcement that Taylor Swift was in the stadium supporting Travis Kelsey, he went in live on the DraftKings app and, and put a live bet on Travis Kelsey to score a touchdown oh, during the oh, game because oh. you figure Taylor's there. You're going to feed him the ball after the game. You heard Mahomes say, I knew I needed to get him the ball because Taylor Smith there. Totally agree. I was on my way out the door, literally walking out the door to head to a youth basketball game. I didn't have, I couldn't get it in while I was driving. <laughs> That's a great bet. Well, by done. the way, did that get reported at all? That she no, I, don't, I think it's pretty I, much. It was, it was overlooked. Didn't hear it, wasn't much. it? Yeah. No. yeah, didn't hear it. Well done. Texter uh, comes from Leonard and Lila in Punta Gorda, Florida. Due to the poor quality, lousy announcing, spotty reception, we dropped ESPN Plus. Now just listen to Tony. Can't the Big Twelve do better? Don't get Brad started. Texter, Jeremy in Cooperstown, New York. I'm trying not to jump the gun, but we just won three straight for the first time under Neil, two of them with a freshman QB. If you look at the Big 12 standings, West Virginia won of six in the league with a winning record. Being picked dead last in the preseason, best thing could have happened. The team is playing with a chip on its shoulder. I love it. Now my question, is nine wins a stupid thought? Love the show. I'll see you at the tailgate for BYU. Go ears. Yeah, I would just say on that, I mean, I, mean, I, love, I love the optimism and this team, I talked before the pit game about the arc, and the arc is headed in the right direction. But boy, there's just there's just a long way to go, and a lot of I think a lot of parity in this league. I mean, let's just try to get let's just try to get some wins here. Let's just you know let's, let's not keep, get too excited. Yeah, just keep piecing it together. Yeah, just, take, just keep piecing it together. Just get a snap here, a snap there. Uh, yeah, there's some weird things coming in the league, but there's also wins on that schedule. There are, As we've said, you get out of September here, and you're going to have more than a fair shot at a bunch of teams left on your schedule. But you are, but you are. The, the, the great part is you are where you would have taken before this season. There's no question. Not just taken. Like, I, I, I just don't know that you could be in a better spot. You just weren't going to go to Penn State and beat that no. particular team. So you couldn't have started any better. And then, by the way, turn back to last year. You're you're five and two over your last seven. Right. Right. You know, I know it's two different teams, but you're starting to piece it together. And there's still losses coming. There's no doubt. But this team has done, this program's done a nice job of riding the ship, getting to three and one at this point. Now you go on the road and take your swings. Texter. I uh, just this week moved my family from Wyoming back closer home to Southwest Virginia. Trip across the country. My wife and I are listening to your show. I thought my four year old was sleeping. After the episode ended, she spoke up and asked if I could listen, if we could listen to music now. I told her, oh, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't know that we had woken, you'd woken up or I could have let her pick the music sooner. To which she said, no, 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 it's okay, Daddy. The food show was funny. <laughs> she said the food show was funny. <laughs> Crossing yeah. demos here to get the food, young, young food audience in. Yeah. I guess that shows what the theme of the last week's show was. The last show, food. Probably talked a lot about the food court. Probably. That's probably yeah. what she heard. 
As opposed to the Texas Tech game? Go in under Apple Podcasts and change our category there. We <laughs> apparently shouldn't be in sports. Got to be in food. If we, uh, yeah. Kids we, know. Hop, they, the kids yeah. know. The kids know, yeah. They're not, they're, they're not tainted by other worldly things. And food yeah, show. Food show is funny. <laughs> Texter. Good review. Actually. Yes, it is. Texter, I'm down in Surfside Beach, South Carolina, South Myrtle. Just finished my late morning walk. Approached a guy listening to the radio when I thought, huh, that sounds like Brad Howe talking. Come to find out, he's listening to Sunday's Three Guys. He's from Winfield down here for vacation. We spoke for a few minutes about the three and one star. We both love the defensive effort. Happy with the record. As for the win itself, it felt like 2004 Maryland. We needed it. Do whatever it takes to finally beat them. I'm way past the point of caring how we win. Just win. Let's keep it rolling in Fort Worth. Let's go. There's a certain- so guy's walking on the beach and he hears you. <laughs> Sorry to ruin the morning walk. Well, there, there's a certain synchronicity about this. Myrtle Beach, the greater Myrtle Beach metroplex, three guys, West Virginians, all connecting. I mean, it all kind of makes sense. <laughs> do you, Classic. Do you, think, um, do you think we could do a show in Myrtle Beach? Oh, yeah. You yes. do? Yes. I, I don't think there's any question. Maybe not. Well, we couldn't have to Labor Day because of football, but I mean, yes. Oh, I'm talking in the August. summer. I don't think I don't think there's any doubt. There's no doubt. Yeah. All right. Good deal. So we going? Yeah, I'd like to do that. Charlie from Midlothian, he Tony Brad Dean. I'm watching the replay South of South Myrtle. Stop by Wings, get a couple <laughs> floaties. Merle's Inland. Duck. I, I was Wait, wa- that's not it. I was watching a replay of the Hamburger backyard Joe's. brawl. <laughs> I was very surprised with these two shots that ABC used going to commercial breaks. This was the first one. You see anything wrong? The second one was obviously taken by the Comax blimp. There you go. Wait, go back to the first one, Luke. Uh, do it again. Oh, because one striped, it's an old picture. So go ahead. Change it, go to the first. So that's all yeah, gold. That's oh, stadium yeah, all gold. Rush. Yeah, it's that's gold, gold rush. rush. And then the other one was, what? what that was stripe. Huh. Well, they couldn't do. Nah. I mean, in fairness, they couldn't. Let me tell you something, Comax. The stuff that they have there, they can. You want gold? They can give you gold. You want magenta? They give you magenta. You want blue? Whatever you need. Complete line of business office equipment. Plus, they'll manage your IT. They that's manage great. all that IT in their Comax blimp. You think that's telemetry? <laughs> so, if you need it, if you're a business owner, visit ComaxWV.com. Scope spreads hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. Dave from Dayton, efforting some family fun on my Lou Wendell pontoon boat after starting my day sipping some Mountaineer Morning from my three guys mug. And now there's a cooler of Kerchevel on board. That's the way I celebrated the Texas Tech victory. Sorry I don't don the always a West Virginia connection hat for the pick. It always elicits elicit some banter. Love the show. Keep up the great work. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Question. And if we beat TCU, will any of the polls put us in the top 25? Uh, you, you might know, be sniffing get, some. I think yeah, if you, if be, you, you, if you do, right you might not be in the top 25, but I think you'll be in that category of getting getting votes. Others receiving. Texter. Sup, fellas. Longtime listener, first-time texter. I commute in Preston County for work, and I pass by this local gym in Masontown quite often. I didn't know you guys got into the fitness business. Love the show. Cameron says three guys fitness yeah, on that, that billboard. Yeah, I know there. where that is. Been by there. Texter. Truly appreciate the pod. Keeps me informed, entertained. Thanks. I'm headed to Dallas for TCU. Concerned about the heat. Not for me, but for the team. Might be 90 at kickoff. I suffered for years from leg cramps until someone recommended a drink called BioLite. It works 550% more electrolytes than major sport drinks. I'm not affiliated, associated, nor do I own stock. I just would like to witness a West Virginia victory at TCU. Please pass a note to the training staff signed by Greg. So there you go. Greg, here to help. I wait. Can you get that at uh well, I tell you what at the Kroger? Five hundred and fifty percent more electrolytes. That'll do something. I was with some people in the health industry not long ago, and they said that hydration is if you stay hydrated, really hydrated, it would alleviate a lot of your problems. Really? They were very, they were really I couldn't overly stress how important hydration is. How are you is. doing on that? I don't do a great job of that. How do you do? Just drink a lot of water. I know. Okay. Do, you? do you do a good job of it? Because I, yeah, because I'm at I the struggle. bathroom every thirty minutes. Yeah, no, but then you can't oh, sleep true. either because you're up three times in the middle of the night. I fall right back to sleep. Hmm. Right back to sleep. That disrupts the sleep cycle. That's it. I fall right back to sleep. I struggle. You don't hydrate. You don't hydrate. I, I I really struggle with it. 
I try, but I struggle. Then I'm tired the next morning because I'm up all night. Can't I can't find the right number of ounces. <laughs> how many times are you up during the night? Well, it depends on how many I've had. If I'm up in that 60, 70, 80 ounces of water, then it's multiple. Three? Uh-huh. Three guys brought to us by Depends. When you want to go at two night, mm, use Depends. <laughs> Joe in Morgantown, I haven't done the research, but this has to be the first time in Mountaineer history that we've not worn blue jerseys once in the first four games of the season. I love all the uniform combo, uniform combos so far, but crazy to think you probably won't see the team in blue until the Oak State game. People, yeah. Uniforms have been, except for the gray, uniforms I would, have been really I would nice say, this year. I would say this. People think about a lot of things. That's what I would say. People think about a lot of things. I mean, I'm first in line. I mean, I think about a lot of stupid stuff, but. Not that this was stupid. I'm just saying people come up with different angles. Oh, you come in. You think about. You're out there. You're in a different orbit. The stuff you think about. I'm with him on the uniform discussion. I like that. What's that mean? I just I like talking. No, I'm about talking the to him. Who are you talking to? You. What do you say? What do you think? I'm like Mark Fidrich, like that, way out there, like that. No, no, not like that. It's just you get you get into something, and then you'll come in one day, and you're like, you know what I'm doing. And it'll be like something just lunar, just something that's orbiting out there. So, you know what I'm doing now? Like you came in today and I told you, you know, we talked about Africa and you said, man, I'm watching these videos now of like animals attacking animals. So that's what you're into now. And, they, and that, what was that? He was watching those super people singing. The Somali pirates. Oh, that was the. Uh, oh, yeah. What was that? What kind was that? Of, I forget what that's called. What the heck that so you called? get onto something and then you like you obsess about it for like three weeks. And, and then he forgets and, that he ever then, looked at it right. in the first place. Then he's on to the he's next He's got thing. an amazing ability to flush and move on. <laughs> he does. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's use, flush, move on. Yeah. yeah it's I wish day. I could do that. That's the old ADD. You're, you're, I'd you're, like to take a little of that with that. Yeah. You do, Tony. That is you. What is that song? There's a chant. Yeah, what the heck is that yeah, called? It's a, it's a what? What song? The, 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 the chant song. that he was into. What was that thing? Those are called shade. Those are called, what the heck is that? Da, 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 da. Remember that? <laughs> Move on. <laughs> to the Three Guys Empire, I wanted to point out how great all the businesses were that represented at the tailgate. They worked together. One concise example, the Chestnut Brew Girl notices the coffee guy didn't have a canopy. She goes over, grabs one for him, helps put it up in a decent little rain. You could have not have picked better businesses to embody the spirit of this podcast. Mm. I sincerely appreciate nice that. Thank you. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, I've been giddy and thrilled with that was exactly, I think, what the three of us wanted that yes. thing to be. It's chilled out. It's fun. It's nothing stupid. People have fun. They eat. They yes. drink. They have fun. Everything's good. There's no BS. Something for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Kids can be there. Families can come through. It's great. Texter. Time of possession stands out. Offense is keeping the defense off the field. Our defense is getting time to rest before they go back out. The offense holding the ball over 32 minutes has increased each game. So our time of possession has gone 34, 33, 31, 31. Do you think this changes in conference play, or is this the identity? I hope it stays. Needs that, to be the that's identity. What you want. Yeah. I'd like to have the ball 43 minutes a game. Needs to be. Texter, three guys. I mean, you're up there in your running of the plays per minute. You're, you're in the service academy area. <laughs> so, truly, you're tied with Navy. Now, I know they're throwing it just a tad more yeah. than the Army is, but you're in service academy territory. Yeah. Good, just run. Run it. Run it. Run old, it. Sc- old school. Run it again. When you're, dri- <laughs> when you're driving down the road and you got a hankering to eat or your gas gauge says we're heading toward empty, don't forget to stop by GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Get your rewards cards. Save every time you walk in on money, on money on uh, save money on food and gas. And on Saturdays, go in there, use your card, you get three times the points. Three guys. Now that the number has been set for the O line discount, I'll bring this up. I'm not an accountant, but I have been in the past. So, <laughs> if I were combining the O line grades as you did, Brad, I would have weighted them based on the percentage of run pay plays or pass plays. And by the way, how's the Scooby-Doo index look now, Wayne from Clarksburg? So the Scooby-Doo index was the route run. Thank you, Wayne. Run. Good question. Can't answer that because it'll take 14 minutes to explain to these guys what the stat was. But by the way, the number was two. If you're elite, two yards per route run. I did check here recently. Cole Taylor was pushing like 1-8. Okay, good. Getting into an area where you want to be. Yeah. Because two's hard to get to. 
Here's one for you. He's one eight. That's again really good. Is there any metric, Keep Brad? Keep throwing it. Here's another person. Is there any metric that tells us which defensive line rotation is the most effective? That's a great question. It Basketball, is. we love to do that, right? We go in and look at the most effective lineups. We can do that. I have not found what my stuff does not have that on defensive line. I don't know if there are other systems that do. That's a great question. To the royal heirs of Efferdine, Sir Hoppy, Sir Senator, Sir Scopes, please enlighten the fair crowd of the best food spots to visit this weekend in Fort Worth. So I jumped ahead and I called my guy, Brian Estridge, the voice. And I said, give me your top three food places for our fans. He came in with Heim Barbecue, H-E-I-M, Heim Barbecue. He came in with Cat City Grill, Cat City Grill. And for Mexican, Joe T. Garcia. Joe T. Garcia. Those are his. He, oh, and he has a, good. Brian has a very, very good palate. So those would all be good. I've been to Heim. And I think I've been to Joe T. Garcia's too, and it's you know you never miss. You know, Fort Worth is a neat city. Mm-hmm. It's got a great downtown, and you know Dallas is downtown. It's kind of like everybody they work downtown and they leave, and Fort right. Worth has more of a downtown vibe to it. Yeah, I like it. Texter, good morning, gentlemen. Listen to the cattle drive there. I've seen no, I've never seen them. Yeah. in action, but I see where it is. Yeah, I've been there before. Like they just drive like drive the cattle down the street. Yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. Listening to the last episode, I'm inspired. Don't know who texted about the movement. Not even sure you can show this for legal reasons, but Brett seems like a cool dude. Talking about the commissioner of the Big 12. I thought it would be a great merchandise idea for their store, signed by Fitty from upstate New York. There it is. What time Eastern, Brett? There's the commissioner. I think it's a fair fair, uh, T-shirt to be sold. (laughs) Also, is there any timeline on the NCAA ruling for Raekwon battle? No, I chatted with those guys this week. You just literally don't know. I mean, you're just, oh, heck, we're in October coming up here. I'm so mad. Yeah, so just long. go ahead and take some more time. Basketball season. Why, ta- why does it Add take so long? Yeah. I mean, couldn't I mean, if somebody, well, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea how it works, but I mean, there's a lot hanging there. Yeah. No answers. Nobody knows how long it takes for whatever reason. It's a very in. It's a very, um, a very very. It's a process shrouded in secrecy. It's a non-linear system you know, that just. It's just it's a there's a bunch of this. Like for example, it's just not one committee that makes these calls. It, it's it's people. It's it's. It's NCAA members. It's it's professors it's athletic directors it's those, i mean they're they're in right brad i mean it's those are the people that make these decisions you know it's it's crazy it's, it's stupid it's, it's stupid well, because we're in an environment where okay i i'm this is a dangerous generalization on my part but anybody can go anywhere about any time and get paid any amount of money but if you're like okay but if somebody says this is the process i'm going to go through then suddenly it's it's like a six-month problem mm-hmm Texter, hello, first time texting. Hence part of the struggles with the industry. All of that. Long time listener, two points. It's better to have Neil Brown, who's a great coach in West Virginia players, than Deion Sanders and a bunch of players for hire. Second, you guys are in the beer business. I spent 24 years in the Marine Corps, starting in the mid-70s. I recognize a hangover when I see it. Our road game stats will improve if the alcohol consumption is eliminated until after the game. What's that mean? I have no idea. But thank you for listening. Texter, I'm a WV grad, class of 01. Grew up in Mason County. Recently retired father was a county administrator for 42 years. He was around Hoppy a few times in that span and always spoke very highly of him. I spent a few years as a political science professor at Texas Tech, where I tutored some of the football players under Tommy Tuberville. Even got to have lunch with assistant coach Neil Brown at the Texas Tech Club back before I knew who he was. My wife, WV class of 2000, and I has always, have always been Mountaineers and even decided to take our young daughters for a photo shoot at the girls' preschool, which was on the campus of Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. Cut to the picture. Threw on the gold and blue, smiled like idiots as we posed mere yards from the Will Rogers and Soap Suds statue. Anyway, love the show. Wish only the best for Coach Brown. Oh, crap. We don't have that picture? <sighs> Had a nice picture there at Texas Tech. Doggone it, I'm sorry. Anyway, they're, they're, they're there at Tech. Can you imagine having to tell someone you're a horned frog? Hard pass. Texter. 
Glenn from Scott Depot here. Great time at the food court Saturday morning. Tacos were awesome. There you go. Those four dudes. <laughs> I think they ate a lot of tacos. Yeah, Kirchville there too. Yeah, enjoying a nice Kirchville. Why, why, why wouldn't they? Hello, three guys. Jeff Edwards from California checking in. few points. I'll try to keep this as concise as Tony instructed. First off, I've been listening to you talk about the three guys' food court a couple of weeks. It's been making me hungry. I wasn't able to make it to West Virginia, so I decided to make my own pepperoni rolls the past few weeks. They're not Oliverios, but they are eh, pretty good. Next, I wanted to tell you I'll be seeing Kaiser White and Dante Stills play in a few weeks at SoFi. I was able to get tickets for the Rams-Cardinals. Veteran tickets. I'm very appreciative of that, so he's a vet. Lastly, thanks for the show. It helps me keep connected to West Virginia and keeps my wife asking, quote, why do you listen to those guys all of the time? It sounds like college professors lecturing. I think we've been elevated. If We sound like college professors. I don't know. Mm-hmm. P.S. She's from Indiana, doesn't understand, LOL. Going to try to get her to a Mountaineer game, then she'll get it. Yes, thank you very thanks, much. Jeff. Jeff, we appreciate it. Say hello to the wife. <laughs> Text her. Hello, three guys. Paul from Tampa, my MVP so far this season, Preston Fox. First Pac-Man time Fox. in years. I, what did I say? Yeah, you said Preston. We refer to him on our game day coverage as Pac-Man Fox because <laughs> of his ability to return punts. This exactly. is the first time in years we can actually rejoice when we stop the team on third down. Instead of watching in horror as the ball leaves the punter's foot, I'm actually confident Preston's going to secure the ball and excited to see what he does after the catch. My opinion, the last two victories can be attributed partly to Preston's clutch play. No more sour stomach watching punts fly. Go ears. I hope we don't jinx him because that has been a huge difference on this year's team with Preston Fox. This next one's neat. Three guys, Texas Tech weekend. I'm near Pittsburgh for a job interview. Final stages with the board of directors. I'm asked what my hobbies are. I tell them I love West Virginia sports, which means I hate Pitt. They must all be West Virginia fans because they offered me the gig. <laughs> on the way home, my, risk there. Yeah, on my way home, the yeah. three-year-old overwhelmed, tired. We stopped at the Waffle House. Screaming and crying, we sat at our seats. Three, du- three dudes walk in. All were in West Virginia football attire. My boys love in West Virginia football. I asked if they wanted to meet the players. My son went from tears to smiles. I just wanted to give a shout out to these three amazing players that took the time to talk with my son. They said they were from Louisville, according to the roster. That would be Beanie and Marcus Floyd. Thanks, guys. Should have gotten my boys' picture with you, with them. P1 Jonah. That's, That's nice. That's a pretty right? good trip. Uh, those are good, two job guys, from, good job from the fellas. Two guys making a difference. Yeah, well done. From Andy in Tays Valley, I have a stat for you. This isn't correlation or causation. It's a clown show level stat. Fits right in. But what better program to share it on? If Texas Tech is the new Maryland, I dug around. Since 01, beginning Rich Rod era, following a win against Maryland, we're 5-5 five and five the next game. However, all five losses were against ranked teams. TCU is not currently ranked. But what about against us in Texas Tech? It's better. Since entering the Big 12, after we've beaten Texas Tech, West Virginia is 5-0, and and one of those wins was over then four-rated Baylor. What does this tell us? Nothing, but I found it interesting. <laughs> Let's go. By the way, Rich, uh, Rich Rod went 0-3 in his first three years against Maryland. That's a good stat. I like that. Well done. Uh, yeah, not, correlation. <laughs> Texter, hey, Tony, I'm wondering if you can confirm if these trading cards are legit or if I've been scammed. I immediately jumped in and pre-ordered four packs, but ever since I keep seeing this advertisement pop up on my newsfeed. So there's this company selling trade. I think it's real. I looked it up too, and it looks like it's the real deal. I think you're okay. I think you're okay. What, Mountaineer trading cards? Yeah. Schools, There's a, yeah, they can do that now, and I all that kind of stuff. So I think they're coming out. I think it was like October 2 they come out. What is old is new. A bunch of schools. Like Yeah, really? A bunch of schools. Yeah. Hey, uh, two and three, four guys. Hello. I heard Sean McDonough complaining about the loud PA during the pit game. While enjoying the MSM broadcast last week, Scopes was somewhat drowned out by the PA. Is it just Sean and I? Signed by Morton, Kansas City via Kanawha City. Now, what's up with that? Well, yeah, I mean, loud is the new, <laughs> loud is the new orange. <laughs> I mean, every school tries to get super loud. And I heard Ren Baker, uh, you know, Ren said this. West Virginia's sound system, like a lot of places, comes from one place, okay? It emanates from one location. It needs to be at multiple locations. Yeah, and it's hard. It's, I mean, pro places, some pro places, yeah, if it's all spread around, then it's not yeah. as overbearing. I mean, like— but I'm it, just telling you, like, you go to Texas, it's crazy. TCU this weekend, 
it's stupid loud. Um, some places in the stadium, it's really loud. Some places, it's okay because it's coming out of one space. And also, um, if it's you know, if the crowd, if it's quiet, then you hear it mm-hmm. more, and it can be it can be distracting. Yeah. Certainly, Texter, basketball schedule, guys. Mountaineers play thirty two regular games. I get to watch twelve on TV. Twelve, all capital letters. The media contracts are great for the Big 12 schools, allegedly, but the streaming of the games on ESPN Plus sure sucks for the fans. From what I've heard, ESPN Plus can boast of second-rate announcers who aren't even at the games and third-rate streaming. Streaming leaves out a bunch of Mountaineer fans who don't even get to watch. At least we have Tony to describe what happens, but it's just not the same as being able to watch and listen to Tony. You know, this is what I hope happens down the road I hope the option comes one day so that people can watch a streamed game and pick what audio you want Hmm. you can do it you can do it and I I think in some see ESPN plus and these streaming services at some point they're going to get a lot of this and if you say hey you can hear both then they might say, okay, I'll do that. Who might say that? Who might say Fans that? might go like, yeah, I'm in for that. Okay, but you would have to do it. I mean, ESPN is. As long as they get their commercials. I don't know how but you see, do how the commercial did, how, part. They, they want their commercials. Yeah, so I think you got to duck the audio when the local goes away. When, when, the net, when the radio network goes away, you duck the audio. You force them to listen to the TV commercials. That's what you have yeah, to do. That might, might be a. You can do, I mean, like Amazon now, you can click on, like when they had uh, Hannah Storm, wasn't was that her, Brad? Hannah Storm, was she doing the Amazon and uh, the other, they had a female broadcast, they had the regular broadcast, they had the Spanish broadcast, right. so you can click on whatever one you want. ESPN does this for national championship games now. Yeah, you can do that now, yeah, that's true. But you know, we, we've talked for a long time about that. I, I kept saying to people a few years ago, stop stop complaining about TV, stop complaining about ESPN, because for those of us that are high-end consumers of sports and chew up a lot, the old cable model was the way to go. Pay for rights fees, put everything on TV, and then we can watch it all. And there were other people, quite frankly, subsidizing us being able to watch sports, right? Because they were taking a little bit of money off each right. cable bill. It's going to continue to get harder like this. So the basketball schedule is one you've seen yeah. where it's 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 going to go more streaming, which means then you're going to have to buy more individual packages on that. I don't Clint, like it. Clint writes in, he'd like to suggest some nicknames for the Mountaineers. Garrett Green, Blonde QB, Rocket Arm, Golden Gun. Um, CJ Donaldson, CJ Express. Aubrey Burks glides past blockers, attacks ball carriers. My brother Adam compared him to a shark, so Aubrey the Shark Burks. Da-na, da-na. Bonus name for Lou Wendell, the James Bond pontoon. Here's another Bontoon. Do you have any – you're not a big nickname guy, Tony, unless it happens organically. Do you have anything? Nah. Kind of retired after the greatest nickname of all time for Dennis Kalichla, the Istanbul. That was – yeah, that was – Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, if it's there, I'll use one, but uh, it has to be uh, organic. Yeah. Hey, Tony, Brett Hoppy. I started listening to three guys a couple of months ago, live in Cumberland. Some of us here are wondering why Danny King was played four years and has shown the ability to kick the ball off and even out of the end zone isn't at least handling kickoffs. Current kicker doesn't uh, kick touchbacks often and didn't do it against Texas Tech. I'm more of a baseball guy, but I enjoy watching football. Can't help but wonder if Neil prefers that scholarship kids like Michael Hayes play and non-scholarship kids like Danny, don't play. Thank you for all the hard work and your insights, Jim and Cumberland. Um, I would say that to this, that from a coaching standpoint, the scholarship and the non-scholarship um, doesn't – the only thing that matters to the coaches is who can do the job the absolute best. Why? Because they absolutely need and want to do everything they possibly can to win. The one thing on the kickoffs is, yes, touchbacks are super-duper good. Um, they – they chart absolutely everything. I don't know. It would be worth a question, but I think they like Michael Hayes's hang time. But again, I mean, that job's open for business every week. And if they don't like what they see, they can make that move. But um, that, that's got, kind of what it is. Some, he had gotten yeah, he, some touchbacks. Yeah. In the Did Texas Tech game, the wind might have been an issue. And also, maybe just the coverage because the Texas Tech got a couple of returns. Yeah, that's, a, that, uh, that's how that goes. Je- Jeff from Scott Depot, I'm out in the Grand Tetons for my son's wedding, and not only have I heard Let's Go Mountaineers no less than 15 times, I'm walking through Jackson Hole, Wyoming, 
Guy's walking his dog, sees my hat, asked if I was from West Virginia. Short story, he's originally from Charleston, has lived in Jackson for five years. That's there's always a West Virginia connection. Now let's keep going. Tony, please tell Brad to stop asking you to overpromise on the food court offerings. Although I wasn't in Morgantown for the game, I heard the mimosas were fantastic. I'm looking forward to the next event. Unlimited crab legs, caviar, and the fresh San Marzano tomatoes picked straight from the hills of Osage. Texter. Three guys, I'd love during the spreads on stats segment, Brad, talk about one or stat lines that he thinks might be interesting for the game for us degenerates who bet, such as DraftKings currently has West Virginia over under at two and a half TDs this weekend, not Brian and Berkeley Springs. That'd be a nice addition, Brad. <laughs> Maybe you could throw in, hey, one little bet thing. Right, right, you shut yourself off. Go. That's another sp- sponsored segment is what that sounds like to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, scope spreads multiple hoppy sports books in the state. Multiple, What's that? Multiple apps operating in the state. Be a nice opportunity for someone to come in and sponsor your, uh, promote, your promote that sports prop bet. Go ahead. Uh, Texter on my way to Preston County buckwheat festival, decided to stop off in Flatwoods for a Reese's pumpkin. Sadly, they do not have them out yet. However, the Reese's sticks were a decent substitute guys. Come up Thursday night to the festival where I'm going to be grilling sausage. We average around 2,500 mm. patties a night. I'll grill as many as you want. Signed by Nate and Kanal. There it is. Nice. Yeah. You've been there, Hoppy. Yep. And then uh, the Fireman's Parade is tonight for the Buckwheat Festival. That's a big deal. And then all this weekend and a lot of communities around Preston County uh, yeah. serving buckwheat cakes and um, whole hog sausage, which I'm very big on. We had uh, Morgantown Homecoming Parade yesterday. Yeah. Down there on High Street. Uh, text read on Sunday's show about the struggle between listening to Tony and listening to you guys on game day. I share the struggle. I've been thinking about it. I'm going to beta test this Saturday. My phone, one ear pod with play by play in my right ear, my iPad, different one, Bluetooth earbud with Metro news game day in the other. <laughs> I'll report back Sunday, Dave and Kaiser. Well, I'll tell you what it's going to work like, Dave. You're going to have a hell of a headache. <laughs> You're going to hear about 11 people talking. <laughs> text Gun lap off mic. Yeah. He's back, by the way. Yeah, Dunlap's back. Yeah, so, I'm back. Cut, so I'm cutting his grass. Tried to come back, do- back door on him. He was cutting, his back turned me a little bit. I was coming down the hill. I hit the horn like, <laughs> try to scare him. <laughs> Didn't phase him. Old D coordinators don't blink. Hey, three guys, question for the center. Big stats. I've not heard that I think, one stat that I have not heard that I think would be interesting. Does he, by any chance, have the yards after contact on the quarterback this week? Most QBs slide before getting hit, but I recall seeing Nico carrying a few guys. One tough dude. Thanks. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Thanks for asking. <laughs> you have the yak? Nico's averaging 1.96 yards after contact. He had 36 last week against Texas Tech. Yeah. He'll get in there. On 12 attempts. So he's a little bit higher than his average there. So there you go. Good question. Yeah. Texter experiencing major deja deja vu between the old Big East and the current Big 12. Old Big East eventually collapsed after enough of the top programs left over a period of years. The current Big 12 going through a similar thing with upper echelon programs leaving and being replaced by less prestigious programs. Feels the same to me, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the Big 12 collapse in a similar way as we get closer to the expiration of the current media rights deal in the early 2030s. Thoughts? J.D. and Southern and Coalfields. No, I totally disagree with you. The reason the Big 12 or the Big East blowed up is because you had so many different institutions of different missions. The fact that the Big 12 is going to go to 16 schools, there's strength in numbers that the Big East didn't have. And you had such a divergent philosophy among the basketball and the non-football. You know, So no, I, I, I don't agree with you. You know what's what's oh, interesting? I think there's another big shift coming. I'm not saying it's over with, but I'm saying the Big 12 isn't going to go down. You know what's interesting is that the Pac-12 dissolved, and you got like what five Pac-12 teams in the top 25, something like that. Oh, this five is the year of all years for a- them. Again, also, your people are making decisions about the college sports industry that don't have the game's best interest. You're you're blowing up the Pac-12 in a year when it might go out having one of its best years. Multiple Heisman candidates. They've been the story of college football so far. Really good football being played. Yeah. Let's blow. Yeah. Let's go ahead and blow that up. Good decision. Yeah. 
First time texter, about a 20 episode listener, mostly while driving my semi up and down 79. Hopefully this reaches you early enough. The group I was tailgating with Saturday invited a couple of Texas Tech fans over. I heard them saying they were an hour early because they got the game time from the Big 12 website. Yeah. You have allies, he says. I offered them a couple of uh, Country Roads adult beverages. I'm still laughing watching a couple of Texas Tech fans unknowingly contribute to the trust. Best money I spent all weekend, less than Fairmont. Seriously. So those poor Texas Tech fans. They don't even know. I mean, we've we've moved into that territory. We've moved from us, ha ha, that's a funny little thing. To there's absolute confusion in the marketplace. Mark- confusion in the marketplace. Mark- Fix it. Checking in from Vancouver, Canada. I'm attending an industry conference aimed at bringing together mineral processing professionals from around the world. Dinner last night. I had the pleasure of sitting next to the subject matter expert from Freiburg, Germany. Hello. <laughs> Somewhere between our entree and dessert, he tells a story about a time many years ago. His work brought him to all places, Martinsburg. As you guys say, always a connection. In the spirit of peer review, may I offer a revision suggestion, Scopes? Perhaps from Weirton to Warsaw, Martinsburg to Munich, and all points in between. <laughs> That's very good. Brian and Chandler, by the way, of Weirton. By the way, Hamilton High School alma mater of Tyler Shuck and Nico Markiel. Yes. Less than two miles from my house. I'm efforting to acquire some Hamilton Husky gear in homage to Nico. He's going to send us some. So we're going to get some gear. Sweet. That'd be great. Texter, good morning, three guys. Almost hoop season. The NCAA cut to the chase. Tell us, well, the NCAA cut to the chase. And tell us why West Virginia is going to get screwed again when they deny Raekwon battle. We know it's coming. I feel bad for the kids, the fans, and the university. My next question would be, since this will be twice in one year, let's sue the NCAA. Unfortunately, battle would be involved, and that's probably why they won't do it. But come on, quit letting the NCAA change their rules midway through when they don't have solid rules to begin with and let them know we aren't going to take being run over by them and anymore. Go to court, seek a temporary injunction from a favorable local judge that allows him to play until there's a full legal challenge. Yes, understand, but your problem is, and Brad can tell you the, the insight on this, you know, you might win that battle – but long term, you could lose the war, right, Senator? I guess, but I mean, what? <laughs> Somebody's going to do that. I mean, you're already doing that with enforcement. Yep. Well, is that right? Think we cheated? No, we didn't cheat. Didn't do that. We'll get you on tape. No, I mean, no, I don't, no. Look, not look, us. I, I mean, so maybe, some school's going to do that. You know, North Carolina was making some noise about it. some school's just going to say, "Don't accept the ruling. We're playing." Yeah. Or, or you know, again, you could get. Well, just as I said, you could get a, a favorable local judge and just say, "Okay." That was good uh, anticipatory steam, though. <laughs> it's already <laughs> pissed off before it even happens. <laughs> Last one, Professor Vinny. Halloween quickly approaches. I'm thinking about great costume ideas. Notably, you could ask listeners to dress up as someone from Three Guys and share pictures. <laughs> but what about those costumes? What would they look like? Just a half-zip efforting pullover? I'm out near WV polo shirt, a sweater vest, I guess. I could get weird and dress as a can of San Marzano tomatoes. Anyway, let's beat TCU. The line jumped from 10 and a half to 12. So we will see, says Professor Vinny. Yeah, we will see. All right. That'll do this thing. It was good content, I thought. A lot of good content. Huh? Everybody's in a better mood. Everybody's feeling a little better, a little more optimistic. Yeah. We're going to be tired. Helps the overall mental health. Might be, might be a little tired when we come in here Sunday. Hey, but. what time? Yeah, you'll get back late. Late. Do we'll same. just come directly here? No, but we'll do it at the same time. 10.30? Yep. Live? Live, 10.30. Yeah, join us live at 10.30. What time? What's your deadline for the texts? Uh, let's do the text deadline. I'm 7 a.m. Is that fair? Oh, yeah. 7 a.m. is fair, right? Wait, is it? Because it's going to be late. I mean... I might not print them. Oh, okay. I might just read them off the screen here. All right. Up so, to you. 7 or 8 o'clock, whatever you got. Thanks so much for being with us, everyone. Three guys brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever dealer in the state of West Virginia. Visit them at burdettcamping.com. That's burdettcamping.com. Comax Business Systems. Bob and the fine folks keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, efficient for 25 years, whatever you need from the business side of things, all kinds of equipment, plus remote monitoring, monitoring your IT. They'll come into a free estimate of what you are doing. Is your data safe? That's the big question. Visit ComaxWV.com. 
by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. Selling family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. By GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. And by the Conley CPA Group, providing value beyond the numbers. That'll do it for us. Our producer, Luke Rousey. By the way, is he ta- you talk about a guy that's hot. You know what he is in his football, pro and college combined this season? What? 117 and 0. Has not missed a bet yet is this right? year. With the And they're not straight up, but what uses the points. I understand. So congratulations to him. He just keeps on rolling. Drove to work today. Big new Mercedes. It's unbelievable. <laughs> All right, we're out. Be good. See you.